It just don't seem right. You not letting me pay you for fixing that single tree brace? Maybe someday you help me, huh? thing I knew, she had my pistol and she was shooting at Court's wagon. Mad dog. Court's is Gretchen sick? Huh? No. No. Well, let's make sure. All right, the rest of you folks stand clear now. Check around, Charlie. See if anybody was hit. Yes, sir. Mrs. Hastings hurt? No, sir. She just fainted. Uh, you see, she hasn't been very well since her husband died last year and... Let's get her up. Yes. Come on, Charlie. It's all right. Now up. Oh, Gretchen has been eating cottage cheese. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Hadley made me a present. I'm so lost. She's not mad. Come on here, believe it. You're not sick, are you? Oh. Nobody hurt, Mr. Chris. Just a few people scared, that's all. I understand now why Mrs. Hastings might have thought that she was mad. I thought the same thing myself there for a minute. No. Couldn't change the fact she might have killed somebody. Did he mean Gretchen might kill somebody? No, he didn't mean Gretchen. I just figure now he's going over to talk to Mr. Hershey about that widow sister of his, you know. And then I think he'll come back and we'll have a few words with you. Yeah, about what? About being so careless. Let a woman grab your gun and start shooting around. It ain't safe. Maybe you shouldn't be allowed to carry a gun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Mr. Hershey, I find it necessary to remind you that you're responsible for the actions and the conduct of the people with you. Your wife and your sister. I understand, Mr. Hill. I'm very sorry about what happened. I'll certainly pay for any damage that was done. Payment wouldn't do much good if someone had been killed by one of those shots. What would make Mrs. Hastings do such a thing? Well, my sister's... Well, she still hasn't gotten over the death of her husband last year, and... I know what it means to lose a loved one. I'm sorry about that, Mr. Hershey. But I can't put up with anything that's going to endanger the lives of the other people on this train. No, it won't happen again, sir. I promise you that. Please see that it doesn't. Why didn't you explain everything to Mr. Hale? Why didn't you just tell him that Florence is afraid of dogs? I'm tired of explaining my sister. That's all I was doing back home when people started to think she was... I almost wish we hadn't brought her along with us. You mustn't say such things. Don't talk so loud. You'll wake her up. Nothing will ever wake her up. 
She wants to feel sad. She she likes being miserable all the time. Now, Will. Do you know what'll happen to us if she doesn't change? If she causes any more trouble like that, Mr. Hale will drop us from this wagon train. Mr. Jarvis, I, I, I'm Mrs. Hershey, Will's wife. We didn't get a chance to properly introduce ourselves last night. I, uh, I, I just want to tell you that my husband will gladly pay for any damages that were done to your wagon. Oh, oh yeah. we're so terribly sorry everything happened. We want to make it up to you. Yeah. Uh, my husband has already told Mr. Hale he'll reimburse you, but uh, you see, he is watering the horses right now, and then uh, we have to get hitched up, and then he'll come and see you during the noon. There are no damages. I just came to tell Mrs. Hastings I'm not angry, and that I understand why she thought Gretchen was sick. You see? Oh, no, uh, you don't have to explain anything to her. No, 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 I'm sure to show you. Look, Gretchen is all right. She's not sick. It was only that she had cottage cheese on her face that made her look mad. Oh, ah, uh, is that it? Yeah. Well, she, uh, she well, does seem like a very friendly she's dog, She's so Lawrence. kind and so gentle. You know, this sort of dog is found in no other country. Her ancestors were English, that is true, but she's pure American. <laughs> Born and bred in Boston. That's where I found her. She's no immigrant like me. <laughs> oh, hey, Liebchen, Liebchen. Oh, Rouse, Rouse. You see, you see, she can defend herself. Oh? She never seeks trouble. Oh, she's so smart. Yeah. Oh. Stay away from here. every time we pass through this country. Well, why? Well, this is one place I really feel like I'm in a church. I see what you mean, Charlie. In that creek where we're going to camp tonight, a man just can't help but feel he's being personally blessed by the Lord when he tastes that sweet water. preacher gives as good a sermon as that, the fellow feels like he ought to make a donation. Mr. Dallas, I'd like to apologize for being rude to you this morning. My wife explained everything to me, and I'm sorry I acted as I did. No, no, please. I must apologize. I should not have lost my temper. My sister Florence, well... She's got a terrible fear of dogs. Many people are afraid of dogs, you know. Oh? I did not know. Well, they are, and... Well, hers has gotten worse since the death of her husband. Well, oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Davos, I'd like to ask a favor of you. My wife and I are trying to help my sister, and uh, we think it best if you don't bring your dog near our wagon. 
seems to set her back when she... But believe me, we would like to have you visit with us whenever you want to, but the dog... I understand. Evening, gentlemen. Good evening. I've just been telling the folks we won't be pulling out till later tomorrow morning, give everyone a chance to fill their barrels with the good water we have here. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Mr. Davos. That, that's all I came to say. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Is it uh, true that many people in this country are afraid of dogs? Oh, not many, Court, but few are. I uh, heard part of what he said to you, Court. I suggest you do as he asks. Keep the dog away from Miss Hastings, only for Gretchen's sake. Hmm? Oh, people who fear animals are sometimes cruel. Thank you. longer. hurt when you fell, Mrs. Hastings.
all of my good chastity. <laughs> I want you to know that I'm very grateful. And I hope you'll try to understand. Why I... without it. Kind of keeps the wagons from going down the hill too fast. Holds them back so they won't run up on the horse's feet there. Yeah? So much knowledge you people need to take us safe across this big country here. Well, that's our business, Mr. Davos. That's why people join our wagon train, because we know how to do these things the right way, you know. How about a little more? Huh? Yeah, he, he's drinking all my coffee. Whoa, that's a good right there. Come on, get that A-frame on. Ooh, Mr. Hershey's wagon's getting pretty close to the edge, ain't it? Morning, oh, Mr. Bill. Hawks. Morning, Mr. Dallas. Keep the coffee hot, Charlie. Yes, sir, hot and strong. Hey, the work's going a little slow, then. You want to trade jobs? Well, you better tell the Hershey that the women can't stay in the wagon down that hill. All right. I don't see you, sir. Tim, take that third wagon back there. Well, you better get the ladies off in the seat. All right. Minnie, you and Florence have to walk down. Matter of safety. Oh. Come on, now. Easy does it. Uh. you worry now. We're taking the Hyattsville where there's a doctor. It's only about five or six more miles. Don't do that. Don't want that pride. Don't do that. Can't you see I'm doing everything I can? Now, folks, I'm sorry to have to tell you Court Davos won't be able to continue on west with us. He's so badly hurt that, well, the fact is, he's now a helpless invalid. His right side, his arm, his leg, completely paralyzed. And he can't speak. Now, Dr. Parnell doesn't hold out much hope that he ever again will be physically the man we all knew and 
quite so much. Now, I know that none of us can ever forget the many favors he did for us. I sure won't. He'd never take a cent for his work. I tried to pay him for it, and he wouldn't take it. We'd still be back in Nebraska if he hadn't fixed my wagon for me. Well, his only assets are his smithy tools and his wagon and his team. Mr. Worcester and I are going into Hyattsville tomorrow morning and see what we can get for him. At best, we can probably only get enough to keep him a few months. Of course, if he charged all you folks for all the smithy work he did for you, Come on. i get a sack and put this in. Thank you, Charlie. While we go into town, I'll see that he... that he gets all this. Completely helpless. Yes, except for what he can do with his left hand. Mr. Hale, who will look after him? Well, I don't know, Miss Hastings. Dr. Parnell said he'd try to find some place for him to live and somebody to come in and clean up for him once in a while. It's not sufficient, Mr. Hale. You need care. A lot of care. I'll ride into Hyattsville with and Mr. Wooster tomorrow morning and stay there to look after Mr. Davos. You'll do no such thing. Why, Florence, you can't. You just can't. You're going right on to Sacramento with us. Florence, I won't have you staying alone with a man that, that's... Well, it's indecent. I won't permit it. You seem to forget that Mr. Davos is a helpless invalid. Someone must care for him. People will say. I only know that Mr. Davis needs help. We all know you're grateful he saved you from that wild bull, and everybody knows he is trying to help you this morning, but it isn't your fault he was hurt. I'm sure that the doctor will find someone to look after him. Florence, think of what you're doing. Are we ready to leave whenever you are, Mr. Hale? Just a minute, Florence. What about the dog? Will you also take care of his dog? Gretchen is with him, Miss Hastings. We all know how much he thinks of that pet. And if you neglected her or were cruel to her in any way, even though you didn't mean to be, any sacrifices you might want to make for him would be meaningless. I suggest you sleep on it before you make any final decision. some of the country, you know. When I first saw that little pumpkin-headed dog, I thought it didn't have a brain in its head. And I got to know it, and found I was smarter than most people I know. I never did see a dog like her until Mr. Davos joined the train. I thought she was a funny-looking little thing then. And the more I got to know her, the prettier she got. You know, as brave as she was, it was like the time she fought that prairie bull. She was still the kindest, sweetest little dog I ever did see. <laughs> My pa told me something about dogs once. I'll never forget it. Now, let's see, how did that go? Oh, yeah, he said, you help a starving dog and make it prosper, it'll never bite you. And that's the main difference between a dog and a man. <laughs> well, we'll be in Hyattsville for very long now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm 
sure relieved you'll be staying, Mrs. Hastings. I wasn't at all sure I could find anybody around here who would be able to take care of Mr. Davos full time. Dr. Parnell, you told Mr. Hale that he would remain an invalid. Are you sure? I was up all night trying to find out if there was anything more I could do for him. And everything I read only confirms what I suspected. Damage to his spine we just don't know how to repair. You can go in now. has decided to quit the wagon train and stay on here in Hyattsville to take care of you. Take care of Gretchen, too. Charlie Worcester's in town with your things. I know you'll get the best price possible for them. And in addition to that, your friends on the wagon train got together, and, uh, well, I think there'll be enough for all of you to get by on for quite a while. Somebody has to take care of you, Court. She wants to. She's offered to. This little house on the edge of town that's been vacant for over a year now. That. Maybe you'd better tell him yourself, Miss Hasty. After you, Mr. Davis. And? And Gretchen, too. Well, at least your intentions were good. I'll arrange to get you and your things back to the wagon. No, Mr. Hale, please. I... Maybe I can... If you... Try to understand what I... The reason... I, I've always been, ever since I was a child, I... My brother Will sometimes used to tease me because... I was so timid. And it was not just animals, it was people, too. The children. The dark thunder lightning. I hated being so shy, but... Samuel Hastings was my husband. He was from... from Ohio, you know. And we met when he joined the church choir, and... Oh, I don't know why exactly, but I... I, I wasn't... It didn't happen all at once, but he made me feel so special. He was the kindest, most gentle. He even made me feel beautiful because he believed I was. We loved each other so much, and our marriage was so perfect. Samuel was killed by a dog on a Sunday. We're waiting in in front of our house, a friend picks up with a buggy, and all of a sudden, a dog came running up the street. So we're trying to run away from something. It made strange sounds. 
Like a child with croup snapping its jaws. Samuel pushed me back on the porch when it came running toward us. And he tried to kick it away from him while I unlocked the door. And then as he backed up the steps, he tripped and fell, and the dog bit him on the neck. He knocked it away from him. And then when the dog lunged at him again, he picked up a shovel that was leaning against the railing, and he hit it and killed it. I wanted him to go to a doctor right away. But he said it was nothing. He just told me to put some arnica on the back of his neck. He took the dog out and buried it. And the wound healed, and so we forgot all about it. It was four weeks later. so restless. Why do you pace like that? Surely Dr. Black could give you something for that headache. I would answer you if I could understand what you're saying. But you've started talking all the time and so fast I, I, I just can't understand what you're saying. Doctor, all the time. But when he, he tries to drink something, he chokes on it. He can't swallow. And he can't, he can't eat anything. Yes, yes, he was bitten by a dog. Rabbit? I, I do. Well, Samuel said it was nothing. Three days. Endless agony. Horrible convulsions. Seizures of incredible pain over and over again and again. And the final horror. And Samuel needed me most. I couldn't do anything to help him. No one could. I couldn't do anything but watch him strangle to death. Not anything. I know. Every bit of common sense I have tells me that I have nothing to fear from her, but... I'll see she's fed. And I promised not to do anything to harm her. It's just that it will take me time to get used to her.
put this in the Everything you can with your left hand. I forgot the napkin. Davos, it's not good for you to just lie in bed all the time. I want you to get up for a few hours every day. Mrs. Hastings can help you into the other room. Be good for you. Well, I'll drop in and see you again in a week or so. a good day for a change. We haven't been in the other room since we got here, and I've... Dr. Parnell says that you shouldn't remain in bed so much. You should get up, even if it's only for a little while. I've made some new curtains for the windows. There's a rocking chair. You can sit and see the road and people going to and from town. I just thought, if you'd let me help you out of bed and into the other room, I thought you might enjoy it. Thank you. 
I can't stay. Chase the ball. That's the only thing left I can do for you. Come on. If you want me to charge, you have to give it to me. Come on, come on now. Here. Come on. Bring it here. and his wife. You know, they own the general store in town. Guess what? I'm going to make millinery. And they've agreed to sell it. Or at least try to. And they think they can. Because there's not another milliner within 300 miles of here. Just imagine. Mrs. Cranston wanted to buy this hat I was wearing. Couldn't believe I'd made it myself. And on the way home, I had another idea. All they have in the store in the way of candy is some uh, peppermint sticks and licorice. Here, I brought you some licorice. Thank you. I thought I'd make some fudge and divinity. Maybe they can sell that, too. The lady might not buy one of my hats, but... I've never met one who could resist my divinity. Gretchen, what are you doing with my darning aid? Young lady, that belongs in my sewing basket. You leave it alone. Between my hats and my candy, we're going to be just fine. I really feel sure of it.
promised Mrs. Boise I'd have her hat for her by tomorrow. I think I'll make some cookies when I get home. It's no good anymore. Bring it over here. Bring it over here. was in town yesterday. He said they'd be coming right through Hyattsville at the beginning of the week. Mr. Chris Hale's train? No. Mr. Hale's wagon train won't be through until July. Come on, Gretchen. Here's your dinner. I suppose your brother and his wife are all settled by now in Sacramento, huh? And Minnie's last letter... She said they thought they were moving on to a place called uh, Monterey. It's in California, too. Right by the Pacific Ocean. Oh, uh, when the wagon train comes through next week, I would understand if you went on west with it. To be with your own people again. I never even thought of such a thing. Well, I have. If I was able, I would go on to California. That was my dream. My own blacksmith shop. Sunshine all the year. Better eat your dinner before it gets cold. Why do you always put my spoon on my left side? Can't you ever remember I am right-handed? to use my right hand all over again. Oh, all winter long, I kept it a secret until I was sure that my hand and my arm were getting well. Gretchen worked and worked every day. But now, if I can bring life back into my hand, then someday, 
I might be able to bring it back to my leg. Someday. Someday. I'm going to be a whole man again. from the handle. It didn't hit her in the head or spine. Gretchen. She has a broken leg and a cut in her chest. She's a little groggy right now. But seeing as how she performed such a miracle for you, Mr. Davos, I don't think she'll have much of a problem curing herself. I expect her to be as frisky as ever in a few weeks. Thank you, Dr. Parnell. Looks like I got one more to add to that list of people I marvel about, Mrs. Hastings. Good. I'm so sorry. I love Gretchen. Forgive me for hurting her. Even if it was an accident, I... No, no, can... Can you ever forgive me for even... thinking for a moment that you could ever harm her? And... Can you forgive me for... for so many other things, for... for all those... Lonely months when I cost you nothing but I understood how you felt. But I'm going to be well. I'm going to work again. And Florence, I, I know I could never take the place in your heart that I would try to, I would, Florence, even when I am well, I will still need you. Nice to see you folks again. And you sure make a nice looking couple, if you'll excuse me for saying so. We thought your wagon train would never get here. Oh, we were so anxious we almost started east to meet you. I can't tell you how glad I am to see you again. See you well and happy, both of you. You too, Gretchen. Well, Bill, sign Mr. and Mrs. Davos to a place on the train. Hey. Maybe behind the Atkins wagon. They're newlyweds, too. Come on. Now, how about that? That doctor told us Mr. Davos wouldn't have a chance to get over that paralysis, didn't he? Well, it just goes to prove doctors don't know everything, Charlie. But some women and most dogs seem to. <laughs> 